This time I'm going to show you about encode and decode. So here's the basic problem. In Python 3, strings are composed of characters. We don't really have a character type in Python, but they contain characters, and these are Unicode characters. So if I say here s equals a, b, c, d, the len of s is 4. And if I say s equals here, let's say here, shalom, which is how we say hello here in Israel, the len of s is 4. And that's great because here I have four characters and here I have four characters. The fact that behind the scenes is a different number of bytes is irrelevant to this question here. Len is measuring the number of characters, not the number of bytes. But of course, behind the scenes, UTF-8, Unicode characters and UTF-8 encoding are using more bytes than that. The number of bytes here is four, but the number of bytes here is eight. And how can I then turn my string into the bytes that I need? Well, I can say here s.encode. And if I do encode, so this returns a byte string. This is known in Python as bytes. And it returns it based on here. So now we see the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the eight bytes that we need in order to create the word shalom in Hebrew. If I were to say abcd.encode, then that would give me back just the byte string abcd. All right, so we already see that encode will take a Unicode string and turn it into a byte string. But it's even more complex than that because what we can do is we can say, you know what, this string s here, I want to get back the bytes not representing Unicode, not the underlying bytes for Unicode. I want to get back the underlying bytes for a different encoding system. For example, I can say here s.encode. And I can say I want to use here uh, um, ISO, ISO. 8859-8. Now ISO 8859-8 is one of this whole family of encodings. You might have heard of Latin 1 or ISO 8859-1 that was used in a lot of Western Europe and that allowed us to have one byte with all the different characters we needed for a particular language. So Latin 1 was for like Spanish and French if I'm not mistaken and 8859-8 this is for basically English where it's like ASCII plus Hebrew. And this allows us in one byte, in one 8-bit byte, to have all the characters. And indeed, when I say, hey, I want to take this Unicode string and turn it into bytes um, that represent this encoding, this is what I get back. So whereas when I do it uh, to UTF-8 bytes, I get 8. When I do it to 8859-8 uh, bytes, I get 4 of them. So if you need to take a string and turn it into an encoding that's not Unicode, you can specify the encoding you want. You can also, of course, specify the encoding for UTF-8. You can say S encode. Uh, uh, UTF-8, and then we'll just get the same eight bytes as we had before. All right, so now what happens if I have something that's from a different language? Let's say I say S uh, equals, and I can say here, here I often go to Beijing. All right, so if I go to the city of Beijing, and I now say S.encode, I'm going to get back a byte string. And we see here that I have six bytes back. Why? Because each of these Chinese characters Basically, uh, it's contained. It, it's represented by three bytes. This is our variable length encoding that happens with UTF-8. Okay, that's very nice. What if I decide to mess around with it? What if I say here s.encode, and then I say, you know what? I want to turn these Chinese characters. I want to encode it using ISO 8859-8. And you're gonna say, wait a second, 8859-8 is just ASCII plus Hebrew. What happens if I try this? And indeed, I'm gonna get a Unicode encode error, meaning the encode is saying to me, listen. You want to take these characters, these Unicode characters, and turn them into the bytes for the 8859-8 encoding. That's not allowed. I can't let you do that. Um, I don't even know how to do that, and so it gives me an error here. Well, what if I have a whole sentence, right? What if I say here something like, you know, I'll just copy a whole sentence here. Oops. There we go. And I'll just paste this here, and then I'll say here, you know, I often go to there. So SI encode is also going to fail here because anywhere you might have an error, it's going to fail. But I can then go in here and add another parameter. I can say here strict equals, or actually uh, errors equals strict. equals strict. And we give it a string there. And this string, this is exactly what we had before. This is the default, the strict encoding. But I can also say here ignore. And if I say ignore, it's just going to ignore any character it doesn't know what to do with. So if you have a whole bunch of text and you are okay losing the Unicode characters, then you can say ignore. I don't think that's a really smart way to do it, but you can do it. Well, let's take a look. If I say help on S encode, you'll see that it says, well, errors equal strict, but it can be a few different things. It can be, it can be ignore, it can be replace. 
What if I say replace here, SN code of ISO 859-8. I say here errors equal replace. Well, it doesn't really know how to replace, so it's just going to use question marks. So we're going to find out that we had a character there that was maybe untranslatable, but at least it's just not going to go into the abyss and disappear altogether. The other thing we can do, let's just take a look, a look here, S in code. If I take a look, you'll see one of them was also called XML char ref replace. What the heck is that? Watch this. I can say S in code ISO 859-8. I can say errors equals, I'll paste this in, and now what I get back is the XML entities that have to do with those Unicode characters. So if you're going to paste this into either an XML document or maybe into HTML, then this will work just fine for you. Which is appropriate? Well, of course, it depends on your needs. But basically, if you are translating Unicode characters into bytes, um, that's typically because you're going to send them over the network or you're dealing with some other sort of encoding system. What if I've got those bytes? What if I now say s.encode? I'm going to put this into B. What is the type of B? The type of B is bytes. I got a byte string back because only a byte string can contain these raw sorts of bytes. Okay, how can I turn this back into Unicode? You know what? I'm going to say B.decode. And now I get, I often go to Beijing, and sure enough, that works fine. So the thing to remember is that str encode, this is the method, you know, it's a string method, obviously, that returns a byte string, always. And whereas bytes.decode is a bytes method that returns a you know, unicode string. I actually think that encode and decode are sort of defined in this weird opposite way, so I'm always struggling to remember which is encode, which is decode, but this is how it works. And if I say b.decode and I say help on that, You'll see that once again, we can use an encoding. So we can say, hey, I want to interpret this in such and such a way. And once again, we can say errors equals strict or ignore or replace. So there are a few different things that we can do there as well. All right. Hope this helps you with encoding and decoding. On to the next part of the standard library.